Micah Tyler joining us here in the K Love Studios Hello. with your new baby. Show that baby off. I mean, all I don't know how many ounces and pounds he is, but he is a he is a real work of joy. I mean, goodness gracious. Okay, this I is do the first this? time for me to actually. Today is the day. I've, this is the first time I've held it in my hand. Smell I've it. Seen an email. No, you got to yeah. open up the pages and like. Oh, I want to. Yeah. You got to smell the ink. It's, mm, it's good. It's fresh. It's, it's good. Really fresh. No, I've I've seen this in email form. I've seen yeah. it in text form. I've written in in my journals, whatever. Yeah. This is the first time I've held it in my hands, and so this is this is really cool. Well, then I held it before you did. Yeah, that's right. yeah. <laughs> I got this last week. And when we are diving into this book, I'm really excited. First of all, Annie F. Downs. My hero. She's a, so good. This is how she describes you. So I can't make this better than her. She said, Micah, a wise voice, a genuine friend to Jesus, and such an excellent storyteller. Yeah. We had to pay her so much money. <laughs> to, no, no, no. She, Annie has been someone I've listened to her podcast for years. Yeah, known who she was. We actually met at a radio event like a year and a half ago and hit it off super quickly. We got a lot of mutual friends, and since then she's been literally nothing but incredibly kind to me. And yeah. so the the fact that she would hop in and and even just give wisdom for the book was something. But when she mm. started like saying like when she agreed to do the forward, I was just like, okay, this is a this is getting very real. And so well, I was, I was waiting grateful. for my call because I would say all the same things. And the thing that has always impressed me about you, Micah, is you are a genuine friend of Jesus, well, and that comes across. Well, at the end of the day, you know that's that's the that, that's the best that I could possibly offer anyone yeah. is just to be like, hey, let me tell you about the best person I know. Me yeah. fall short all the time. Him, something I can always point to and be good to talk about. So, yeah. Well, we have been singing your song "Walking Free" for a long time here at yeah, K Love. Couple years now. Walking and walk. Okay, I'm gonna stop. No, we're yeah, I was, we're listen, toned. Up. I was enjoying. It. I never get to listen to it. <laughs> I'm always working during that song. Uh, yeah, this is like a bad karaoke <laughs> night. <laughs> but the book "Walking Free," where does that start off? Just jump off. Somebody has never heard of this, and they're picking up this book. What does "Walking Free" look yeah. like for them when they reach the end of this? So, my hope is this. My hope is that. No matter where you have started in the whole thing, because because the, the thing is, I travel all over the world, yeah, and and as I go, I meet so many different stories, so many different people, so many different point of views, so many different roads they've taken and steps they've taken, all these kind of things. But I found that the common thread between all of us mm -hmm. is that God keeps putting breath in our lungs for a purpose. Mm -hmm. and, and the thing is, every time that breath is mentioned in Scripture, there's purpose attached to it. In the beginning, God created it's the heavens light. and the earth, and he said, let there be light with his breath. And he he, re he spoke, like he formed a man out of the, the dirt, and then he spoke, and he breathed breath into his nostrils, and he rose up. And like over and over again, the breath of God is just constantly filling. So right now... The only per the only people who get to read this book are mm -hmm. people who have breath in their lungs. Okay, so that means everybody's <laughs> qualified at this uh -huh. point, right? But we're all disqualified because of our sin of being able to just walk in the true freedom of knowing Jesus. So when He comes mm -hmm. and He lays out this opportunity to invite us, who the Son sets free is free indeed. Ooh, say that I again. I find that everywhere that I go, yeah, everyone needs to be free and free indeed. And so, singing this song the last couple of years just really opened my eyes. I had so many different people. It didn't matter if they were battling through addiction, if they're battling through boredom, if they're battling mm -hmm. through just a mundane life, or if they're just in complete chaos and tragedy. Our family has walked through cancer and hurricanes and all kinds of crazy stuff. But I've always realized that even in the height of the storms, even in the depths of disease, there's still freedom to be found in Jesus. And mm -hmm. so as he has taught my heart things, I'm like, this is just too good for me to not tell other people. The disciples, even like in the book of Acts chapter four, they, they were standing before the, the Sanhedrin, before the Pharisees. And they're like, hey, we need you guys to like shut up, like quit talking about uh -huh. this Jesus thing so much. And they said, how can we not talk about what we've seen and heard? So yeah. this book is literally the overflow of God just being like, hey, mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you some things that you cannot keep to yourself anymore. And I love how you've broken it up into bite sized pieces. Yeah. And it is a six week yeah, I know that we're starting at the beginning of the year and we're getting geared up. So yeah. we're not going to say that R word resolutions, but I love a plan, like put a plan in front of me right. and let's walk this out. And so 45, 42 different steps yeah. that you have each bite sized piece of what that freedom looks like. Which one right now jumps out like that's that's the step I want to talk about. <sighs> Here's the deal. You're asking me to pick my favorite baby. No, I'm not. Of this I'm not. I'm just the no. one that popped into your head. Well, so the one that pops in my head is I, I, there's a guy named Zane Black, and I was on a winter jam last year okay. or a year and a half ago. Yeah. And um, while I was on this tour, um, he brought a devotion for like our, our our winter jam church, like on Sundays. Yeah. And he started talking about the sower 
that we read about in scripture where the sower goes out and he casts seed and some seed falls on the good ground and some seed falls mm-hmm. on the sidewalk and it gets eaten by the birds and some so- seeds go into the thorns and they kind of sprout up at first and they get captured by the thorns. And we read this thing and we always think about the soil and we're so obsessed with the soil. We're thinking about like, okay, yeah, we got to make sure we can find good ground. And here's the deal. If you're planting a garden, you're going to really like Real on the internet, how deep do I need to go? What time of the year do I need to put it in? How much water does it need? How much dirt? What kind of dirt should I put in there? Should I check the pH balance? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. The story is is a twofold thing. It's talking about the good seed that the gospel goes in and, and takes root and becomes something, right? But think about the sower for a second. Think about him just throwing seed everywhere. He's like walking down the streets of New York City, tossing seed because at the end of the day, whether it hits a sidewalk, whether it hits granite, whether it hits the freshest dirt in the whole wide world, he's not worried about can the dirt handle it. He's saying, I just want to see something grow. Hmm. And so in our lives, there's a step. And what I, what I want people to understand is like, it's not a step up. It's not like a staircase that we're walking up to her at the very top of the stairs. You get to be free. Yeah. You know, it is a step forward hmm. with Jesus. Hmm. The first the first step is talking about like. Do you know Jesus? And if you know Jesus, then we can keep going. If you don't, let's get to know who Jesus is first. Yeah. And then from there, it's just a step one after another. So for some of these steps, they're going to be little baby, easy. Oh my gosh, I'm already living this out. I'm walking this out. God's already doing this in my life. Awesome. Thanks for the reminder. Mm-hmm. And some steps are going to feel like you are on a tightrope, mm-hmm. looking down with no net below being like, if I take this step, mm-hmm. it may cost me something. Mm-hmm. It may be a big, bold brave. My feet feel like they're 45 pounds each, but I've got to take this step forward because a step forward is always a step towards where God is calling us to Mm. and his freedom. So that step always jumps out to me because I'm reminded that in my own life. And listen, what Caleb does, Caleb is literally, they're not, Caleb doesn't pick which cars the radio signal goes into. Mm -mm. They don't pick the houses that it makes its way into. Mm -mm. You guys are faithfully tossing the gospel out, partnering with songs that we write mm. that are trying to in, in, encase the gospel yeah. so that they can reach hearts wherever they could be. Not yeah. worried about the soil, but asking God to make this soil fresh enough where the gospel that does not return back void yeah. is able to plant something and make a seed. When you say the word freedom, it, it resonates with me in my own life and story because there was a lot of years that I lived in such captivity mm. to the idol of self-loathing. And as a believer for most of my life, but also like worshiping this idol of like hate towards myself, because I believe that that was more powerful than God. That was keeping me safe. And the gift when somebody walked alongside me and prayed with me to Mm. root out that lie and to take that away. And it literally every time I hear your song, Walking Free, I remember walking into church that like literally feeling taller lighter physically yeah. in my, yeah. but it was because of such a spiritual um, release of like, what is it when Jesus says like, you know, the freedom that I give to right. you. Like, I think that so many of us in the church, we say freedom, but we live such a mitigated oh, portion captured. of that. Absolutely. Well, Galatians says it is for freedom that he set us free. Like God created freedom so he could give it to us. Yeah. So we would have a hope whenever we feel like we are captive. Do you know where I learned the most about freedom? Where? About 10 years ago, Uh played uh, four nights in a prison. That's where I learned about freedom. Because I'm going to tell you something right now. I saw freedom in the lives of men, all dressed in white, standing behind four feet of concrete and barbed Mm. wire in ways that I had not seen in churches in years. Yeah. Because those guys, they understood the importance of grace. Yeah. They understood the need for mercy. And for a lot of us, the greatest gift that God can give us, and this mm-hmm. is hard to hear, is need. Mm. Because if we didn't need him, hmm. then we, would never, we wouldn't have to know him. Yeah. But whenever we do feel captured and we do feel captive by the things that are around us, God says, this is okay. Because if you need me, mm-hmm. I'm going to be there. Yeah. If you need freedom, I created freedom so I could give it to you. Yeah. I created grace so I could give it to you. I created mercy out of my goodness so that I could lavish it mm. on your life. Yeah. So again, this is, and this is not one of those books where it's like, okay, I know how to be free and I'm totally free now and come and watch what I did. Yeah. That's not how it works. This is me walking through my own workings of what freedom looks like and just saying, can we walk together? That's why we mm-hmm. put it in steps. And so every seventh day yeah. of this study, it's a retracing your step. It's where we go, hey, instead of just like trudging forward, Let's look back on the last six steps mm. and say, what step was hard? Yeah. What step was easy? What did we learn? What do we take? What do we still have to grow in right now? So it's like this daily 
recountance mm-hmm. and remembrance and reminding of going like, okay, we may not be feel like that. We have, we're not crossing a finish line until we are in heaven, right? Yeah. We are running a race, right? Yep. But sometimes if I told you, hey, we're going to go 42 steps this way. Mm-hmm. And I just told you we're going to walk through the studio here. You go, great. Right. But if I put a king in below you and I put a tire open between it, those 42 steps feel really, really big right now. So I, this is not one of those. This is not one of those books where I'm going like, "Hey, everyone, start at the same place. We're all going the same direction. It's all mm-hmm. good. We're all going in the same direction. We've all been invited to the same freedom, mm-hmm. but we, but we are maybe starting from different spots on the road here. But we yeah. can all gather together and just say, God, I need you. Yeah. I need your freedom, and I feel like you are good enough to give it to me. And then, mm. then we just walk in it. Author Micah Tyler Weird. and artist in, here in studio talking about his brand new book, Walking Free, taking those small steps to a big God. I sometimes I think that I talk too, not talk too big, but it be, the ideas just seem unattainable. Sure. Like, okay, great freedom, but like I've lived my whole life, I have this belief about myself, and one of the best pep talks. I played sports growing up, and you had that coach that was like, "Get in the game," right. and it, woo fired you up um it's that place in isaiah 52 where the people of um israel were believing that the idols of babylon Mm. were more powerful than god and they were worshiping and the prophet isaiah says wake up get up dust yourself off and take your place and take that yoke of captivity Mm. from up and around your neck and we can read those things we can aspire to freedom but micah what would you say to that person that is coming to you that you've probably met somewhere along the road that says, I desperately want freedom, but what, what's the first, how, like, what do I do like, tangibly or? First of all, it's not about do. It's mm-hmm. not about what you can do to get to freedom. Cause here's the most beautiful, beautiful thing about the Jesus that we serve. Every other religion, if you work hard enough, mm-hmm. if you do enough good things, if you line up enough with their rule book and their, what their teachings would be, then maybe you can make your way up to their lofty God, their yeah. idol or whatever that is. But our Jesus saw that we could never make it there on our own. So he left the throne and walked all the way mm-hmm. and he meets us where we are. Yeah. So the first step is not how can you dust yourself off and get clean enough to go to church? It's not how can I fix all the things in my life so that I am now like Jesus may accept me. That's not how this works. Okay. For all have sinned and fall short of the mm-hmm. glory of God. And the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is, is eternal, eternal life, life through Christ Jesus. Yeah. That God demonstrates his great love for us in this way that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Romans yeah. 5, 8. So at the end of the day, it's not, Micah, you don't know the things that I've done. You don't know where I've been. It, that's mm. not how this works. Yeah. I don't have to. He does. And he still says, come to me, mm. all who are heavy laden, and I will yeah. give you rest. Yeah. He says, you his, in, in Isaiah, it says that his arm is not too short to reach and his voice is not too faint to cry out. So no matter where you are, it's not about how you can get yourself prepared. Mm-hmm. It's him saying he is prepared away. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to trust that until until I'm ready to take that first step, he's going to sit with me. Mm-hmm. He's going to lay me down Ooh. next to green pastures. Yeah. And then when we're ready to walk, I know there'll be someone to hold my hand. And mm-hmm. when I fall, he helps me up. When mm-hmm. I walk strong, he cheers me on. When I can't do it anymore, he carries me. Yeah. Did you get that? You need to rewind this part of the video and listen to that again. He's the man. Yes. Yes. So you have been pretty public this last year of losing a hundred pounds. Yeah. Where did your experience of knowing the freedom of Christ play into that journey for you? Honestly, it was the day I think we talked about this before, but I think it it was the day that I, I crossed a hundred pounds. So I'm, I'm at like 118 right now, which is, Ooh. which is real. It's, it's, listen, it's nice to be able to like not sweat so much. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like now I'm sweating purposefully, not just because I'm like, you know, putting like peeling an orange, you know? So, and so, but, but for me, the day that I crossed a hundred pounds, I stood on the scale. I've been waiting for the day to come. And I stood on the scale and I looked down and I saw that I'd hit the number. And I thought that in my mind, Jesus was going to like put his arm around me and go, I'm so proud of you. Mm-hmm. you're better today. I love you more mm. because of what you've done. Like you're taking care of the temple. You're doing the whole thing. And I thought that I was going to have this, like this more acceptance from Jesus. And I was reminded that day, God loved me just as much a hundred pounds ago. Mm. 
Hmm. When I thought less of myself, when I had less confidence, whenever I was having just a hard time, you know, and, 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 and eating out of like depression and those kind of things, God loved me just as much and he was just as good and he was just as welcoming and he was just as near and just as close to me. And so what I learned is that I listen, making healthy choices is something that that was our goal last year. I, at the first of the year, we we're trying to figure out like what's what's our goal for the year. And we just said, we're going to try to be healthy, yeah. healthy physically, healthy spiritually, healthy emotionally, healthy mentally, all the things that we can do. OK, but in doing that, I think that it does it does honor the Lord well whenever we're in a healthier situation. Mm-hmm. But also your starting point is not going to be a less amount of appreciate not appreciate a, a less amount of Value. love and admiration and value to God. Yeah. No matter where you are on this whole journey right now, yeah. he says, it's not about how good you are. It is my goodness that is mm. overflowing and better than anything you have. Whew. And I will be just as good no matter where you are on the whole mm. journey. So, yeah, it's again, it is it is I, I'm noticing little things about like like running around on stage and not getting super winded <laughs> and having to catch my breath for four songs. That's so you're nice. telling me there's going to be a full on dance set. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going full choreography, move over Torin. Yeah. I'm going to do cor- Torin dance moves. I'm going to do backflips like Kane. <laughs> I'm going to have muscles like Jeremy. I'm just I'm so excited about the new year, new me, which is everybody Ooh, else. 2023. <laughs> no, no, I'm going to try to sit in a chair if I can. <laughs> I'm just so tired. So, yeah. Well, we are all looking forward to seeing you out on the road this year. And Micah and his brand new book, his baby, Walking Free. This is so cool. Taking small steps to a big God. Thank you for writing this. Oh, my God. Thank you for putting your heart and the transparency of your own story and journey. It's just, you remind me of one of my favorite quotes from C.S. Lewis. It says, the moment of friendship begins when one person turns to the other and says, you too? I thought I was the only one. Wow. And you're just offering out your hand to be able to say, let's walk towards Jesus well, together. So I, re- I appreciate that. Appreciate you. And also yeah. Robert Nolan, the guy who I wrote this book with. OK, I, I, I got to Ta- tell me about so, Robert. So Robert is that friend. Robert is the guy who I met in a K-Love office. We were talking about what book if, if I wanted to write a book or not. Yeah. And it was then that he looked at me and he just said, I value what you believe right now. And I want to make sure that we keep it valuable. Like, mm-hmm. we are, like let's 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 really work hard. So this is the guy who I'm calling on my way back and forth to the airport. I got a two hour drive to the airport, live in Texas. Yeah. So I got a two hour drive to Houston every single Ooh. time. So Robert got my two hour airplane uh, drives every yeah. single time I drove the airport. He goes, call me, I'll record it. So I just preach in many sermons and that kind of turned and I sent him things that I wrote and things that we yeah. sketched down. And, and he was such a friend to walk through this whole thing. Mm. And so big shout out to Robert, who's just he's, he's well, great. Well, can he's, we call him Rob? Robbie? Uh, oh, Bobby. Big Bobby. Bo- okay. Bo- Bobby, Bob. Bobby Nolan. Yeah, Bob. That's good. Bob. Bob. <laughs> Bob. Bob Ditka. OK. <laughs> well, thank you, Micah Tyler. Yeah. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your music. Else. Seriously, I was getting ready this morning doing a whole Micah Tyler playlist. Come on. No, there's so many songs like. And I know the songs that we play here on Caleb, yeah. but to go deep in your albums, like you got some treasures there, sir. Uh, hey, I appreciate that. And fun fact, yeah. we got a new record coming out this spring. What? I got, got five more songs coming everybody's way. Can you come and sing them to me here in studio? Yeah, of course. And also, um, follow-up question, can I do backup vocals on uh, an off, album? Off camera, let's talk about that. And um, I'll pray about it. <clears throat> allow me to. Allow Toby me Max to said that I could be in one of his. He just wouldn't turn the microphone on, but I could still be present oh if that's an option then the, I give, give me the toby special <laughs> uh it's the Lori special yeah that's true yes that's right <laughs> mike and tyler here at caleb thank yeah. you for being here Thanks, Micah. Lori. yes